Amen. Well, I want you to go over to 1 Corinthians with me. Amen. The 15th chapter. And I'm going to read a few scriptures with you. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at verse number 42, 43, and 44. Is this all right? When you have it, say amen. Amen. Mm. I want to go up one verse of 41. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star different from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. And it is raised in power. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God a praise. Amen. 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 And I think it's important. On last week, we celebrated the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And this morning, I want to continue that theme. I want to minister to you a message called the other side of the cross. The other side of the cross. Amen. And I, what I want to talk to you about this morning is, is Jesus earthly and his heavenly ministry. And then when you and I get our robe. Amen. And we finally get to a place. That we always desired. Amen. Amen. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. How, how many of y'all know it's a better world? Yes. <laughs> how many of y'all know God has some good things waiting on you? Yes. You just got to believe it. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, let, let's say, talking about Jesus, God gave him two categories of ministry. He had an earthly ministry, and he has a heavenly ministry. Amen. His earthly ministry, uh, his, his major role was to come and live a sinless life that he may die as a sacrifice for our sins. And the key to his ministry is the fact that he overcame death, which is your last enemy. Amen. So Jesus came to the world to die for your sins, to be raised for your justification, and that way he closes out his earthly ministry. But, but, but it's amazing. Uh, you have to really think about who Jesus is to appreciate what he did. Now, what, what, what I'm talking about here, uh, people, is that, that uh, Jesus is unlike anyone else that has ever lived. And the reason why, I want you to think with me for a minute. Uh, in the beginning, the man that you and I know as Jesus existed with the Father during the time of creation. But he wasn't Jesus. He was the word of God. Anybody going to pray with me? And so when God spoke and said, let there be light. It was the word that created everything. And that's why the scripture says that everything was made was made by him. And there was nothing. He made it all because he was the word. But when when God uh, realized that it was the fullness of the time that he needed to send a redeemer to the world, uh, he took this same word and threw a model called the incarnation and that Incarnation is a, a Latin word. It's incarnate. It simply means to take something invisible 
and make it visible. So, so what God does, he takes this invisible word and he, he wraps some flesh around it. It's called the incarnation and all of a sudden now there is a man standing on the earth that's fully God and he's fully man. And, and he has a name called Emmanuel. And, and in the middle of that name, we find the M-A-N, gender, man. He was a man. Anybody go pray with me? But at the end of his name, we see the E-L that represent the presence of God. You, just like in Elohim and El Shaddai. So in Jesus Christ, you have a man that's fully God and he's fully man. And this man had to come and die for our sins. But people, when he died for our sins, he ended his earthly ministry and he began his heavenly ministry. Somebody ought to pray with me now. So in other words, when Jesus raised from the dead, he has all authority over everything on the earth. Somebody ought to pray with me here. He has authority over healing, sickness, diseases, death, ocean, hurricane. If it can happen on planet Earth, Jesus has the authority over it because he's been given dominion. So what Jesus is saying here is, look at here. I'm going back up to heaven. And you know, just like in a relay run. You're running and you pass the baton off to somebody else. So when Jesus is running and he's getting ready to ascend up into heaven, he passes out the baton to the church. Now the church is to do everything that God did when he was on earth using his delegated authority. Now listen, y'all, uh, the ascension is God's means of elevating Jesus to the highest position in the universe. The Bible says he was exalted high, far above the highest heaven, simply meaning he's been placed in a position where he has sole authority and power and he's been seated at the right hand of God so that he can open up the heavenly realm to his people, the church. Now, people, listen to what I'm saying here now. Jesus ascended up. That means to go up. He ascended up into a position where he can sit next to God. And when you pray and ask him for something, he's sitting there next to the father to nudge the father and say, go ahead and do it for him because I died for him. In other words, people, he, he's sitting in heaven with a full body. So think about this. When, when Jesus came to the earth, he left one dimension. But when he came back home, now think about this for a minute. So we, we, we're going to work this here for a second. Listen to this right here. Jesus as the son of Mary was born in a tiny village called Bethlehem. But as the son of God, he was living before he was ever born. He existed with the father from the beginning. Jesus, as the son of Mary, was birthed by his mother and reared by him. But as a son of God, Jesus created Mary and everybody else who was ever living because he's the son of God. Now, as the son of Mary, he was subject to the laws of the land and authority. But as the son of God, he raised from the dead saying I have all power in my hand in the heaven, on the earth, and even below the earth. In other words, there's a big difference between Mary's child and the Son of God. So, so now look, when, when Jesus 
have fulfilled his mission, you and I need to understand the only way he go back to heaven is that he's met every criteria for God to save you and I to the uttermost. So now there is a man who's fully God sitting next to God with the body interceding on your behalf. Don't you ever tell anybody you all alone. Because you always have Jesus with you no matter what's going on. Don't ever tell anybody you're in a place of darkness where light won't break through. Jesus is still the light of the world and you have the Holy Spirit. You just need to... That's all you need to do. Now, wait a minute. I need to... Watch this here. Now, now listen, y'all, and I'm going to go back to my message here, but I want to share something with you. One thing about Jesus accenting that you need to know is sometimes you need to know when things get so troubled for you on this earth, when you can't find no peace on the job, you can't even get peace at home. You try to cut, you try to work by yourself and you still can't find peace. You, you find yourself talking to yourself about things you shouldn't even be talking about. You, 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 you look out and you see a person and they ain't smiling, you think they mad at you. That, that may be the time for you to just extend up above your problems and, and see what God is saying that's going on. See, and now, now let, me, let me share one more with you about this ascension. Sometimes, a situation can get so bad for you. And all you want to do is try to hold on to it and fix it. But what you don't understand, no matter what you have or what you could get, you can't do anything with this because this is not a problem mama can fix. This is not a problem daddy can fix. This ain't a problem that money can fix. This is not a problem that the pharmacist sometimes what you have to do is, is move your hands because you, you don't want to let it go and, and just let it ascend up to God. In other words, sometimes just let it get out of your hand. Sometimes we're trying to do so much and sometimes all God is telling us is to just let it go and let it come up to me. I, 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 can, I can fix it if you would just See, I could fix this thing for you if you could just. I'm trying to tell y'all, I, I can fix this thing up for you. You need a miracle. I'm the only person that can do a miracle. You need somebody to break through you. I'm the God of the breakthrough. But you got to just let it. You need to realize it doesn't need to be in your hand. So if I can get it out of your hand, I can put it out there so you can see my power and your enemies just like heathens. And I will be glorified and praised in the earth on what's going on in your life. The problem is I need you to let it go. Somebody said just let it go. So just let it sin. But now listen here, y'all. Jesus ascension is vital to our faith. And the reason why is this. On one side of the cross, he died. And the only thing that's stronger than death is resurrection. Because how many of y'all know in order to have a resurrection, you need something dead? Now, if Jesus does not raise from the dead, somebody better pray with me in here. If Jesus does not raise from the dead, the farthest that you and I can go is to a cemetery. But, 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 but since he raised from the dead, it means there's life beyond the grave. But notice what happened with Jesus. Jesus didn't stay. Well, wait a minute. He stayed on the earth about 40 or 50 days so that he would make sure that thousands of people saw him and knew the reality of his resurrection. 
But then the time came when he was down in Bethany. Yes. And time came for him yes. to go home. Yes. You ought to love this about Jesus. The Bible says he's standing there talking to them, blessing them with the word. And while he's talking, all of a sudden, not like a rocket. See, see, a rocket to take off, it causes a lot of energy, a lot of shaking and blowing and power being moved. Jesus said, that's not the way you really go up. Let me show you how you go up. You just simply lift your hands up. But now, first of all, before you go up, you got to know where you're going. See, in other words, I, I, listen, y'all, there wasn't no need of him sending me to Jerusalem because I got to go east to go that way. Ain't no need of going to America because I got to go west. Somebody ought to start praying with me now. Ain't no need of going to China. I'm going north. That's not where I'm from. My home is in heaven, so when I take off, I'm going straight up, and I'm going to be met in the clouds. And listen, y'all, why did he go straight up? The truth to you that there is a heaven, that is where he's from, and that's where I'm going right now. And if you just keep the faith Keep on running. Don't get tired. Don't give in. Don't give out. One day you too shall. Watch out now because we're going to close it now. Deacon is ivory. Paul is talking to these people. And they upset. Because they do not understand. The resurrection. And listen. To how Paul convinces them of the resurrection. He says, huh? How is it that you ask how can the dead be raised? And the reason he said it this way is he's trying to tell them you see the resurrection all around you every day but you don't understand. Now, y'all listen to me. Paul is saying, most of y'all are farmers. And you take a seed and you plant it. And once it's buried, it germinates and it pushed back up and it appears. So how is it that you don't understand that if something go beneath the ground... Something magical, something miracle happened and something comes up that you did not plant. Watch this, y'all. Now listen, Paul tells him, he said, well, look here. Uh, God has made us with different bodies. He said, there's a body for a man. A body for a beast, Mike. A body for a fish and a bird. And what he's saying there is, I have created all types of animals to fit in a perfect environment that they will benefit because of the way they have been destructed or, or, or created. In other words, he's saying, if you take a fish and you take that fish out of water, oh, he might do well. For a few minutes. Are y'all with me? But he can't strive on the ground. Because he was created to do his thing on the water. So in his body, God created him with fins that allow him to breathe without coming up. Because that's where he's stronger at. He says with a bird. He said you might find a bird hanging down on the ground. But if he really want to figure out what it's all about, he needs to find out what is it that he has that's different from this other person and put it to you. How many of y'all know birds do well sometimes on the ground? But if you really want to see the majestic role of God, let a bird reach out and start moving his wings. See, if he's moving his wings, 
He's doing exactly what God called him to do. And if he's in the air, he's in an environment that he was designed to excel in. Anybody go pray with me? I'm almost there now. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? In other words, let's cut it to the quick. I made you. You do your best when you with me. But if you really want to know what I have for you and what I can do through you, just let yourself go into the spiritual realm and use a little faith and you will find out that when you team up with me, nothing can bother you, nothing can get in your head, nothing can get on your nerve. When you get in contact with me, you realize you are right in the right place to be blessed, to be built up, no matter what comes your way. If you realize you do your very best when you hooked up to me, you're going to succeed in every now and then, every once in a while, just to make you feel good. I might let you elevate up into a place where you can get some peace that surpasses all understanding. Every now and then, I'm going to lift you up above all your enemies and show you they ain't got nothing on you every now and then. I might let your pockets get low just to show you I'm still Jehovah Jireh. I still can meet your every need every once in a while. I'll let somebody disturb your peace because I'm still Jehovah Shalom. I can give you peace when a million people are against you. I can give you peace when your medicine don't work. I can give you peace when your children in trouble. I'm in it now, I'm in Okay, I'm in it now. I'm in it now. Now let me stop right there. Let me finish my message. So listen, y'all. Jesus wants you to know after the cross you have to check him out. He didn't stay on the earth. He went back to heaven. Somebody say after death. Somebody say the next route. Okay, listen y'all. So Jesus he's up in heaven but over in Hebrew he talks about an anchor for your soul. Anybody want to pray with me? But, but let me share this with you though. When Jesus had this new body, uh, he ate in it. They was able to recognize him in it. See, he, he's trying to give me and you a hint of how things are going to be in heaven. Anybody going to pray with me? Listen, y'all. This is what he says. Deacon Terry. He says that the, this body is sown in incorruption. And it's raised uncorruptible. It, it, it's sown in dishonor. But it's brought up in glory. Anybody going to pray with me? It is sown in weakness. Hmm. But it is ripped up in power. He says, sown a natural body. But it's raised a spiritual body. And this is what needs to blow your mind. Because the body that will be planted, you're going to look the same. But your power and your ability is going to be completely different. Somebody ought to pray with me now and here. How many of y'all know? If you take an orange seed and look at it and take an orange and put it next to the seed, if you wasn't educated, you wouldn't believe that this here came out of the seed. Somebody ought to start praying with me now, see. See, y'all still ain't got what I'm saying here. In other words, he said you're going down one way but you're coming up another way. But didn't I tell you there are some things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, that has not entered into the mind. God say, I got something. 
So now hold on, y'all. You, 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 you plant a seed. The seed doesn't have any juice in it, but what it produces have juice in it. You plant a seed. And you get an orange, and inside this orange is, is vitamin C, vitamin D, potassium, calculus, everything is in here, but it came from a little bitty unattractive seed. Listen, a seed is able to produce a hull. You don't bury a hull. But you get a hull to protect the meat of the fruit. Y'all ought to start praying now. And then, if you go deep enough, you plant it one seed. After you dissect this bad boy, you may find nine, ten, eleven seeds. Sometimes there's so many seeds, you have to get one that's seedless. God say, I'm going to blow your mind with the world and with the body that I have waiting on you. Some of y'all think y'all living in a big house right now. God said, you ain't going to believe what I have stored up for you. Now listen, y'all. The glory of an orange is its juice. The glory of man it's the spirit of God. You got to learn to get into the spirit of God where you can be like God. You, y'all, 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 let me tell y'all something. It, it ain't nothing like going to work and don't nobody like you. But you're walking there with God because I done partaken of the good life. It, it, it's just something, y'all. To walk into a place where people don't like you. But you still got your swagger. Because I've been with God. Because I learned in life. That if I'm alright with God. I want to be alright with you too. But if you don't want to be alright. I'm still going to be alright. Because I got God. But I'm going to be one step better. Because I got God. I guarantee you I'll never treat you like you treat me because God has told me I'm a lot better than that. In other words, how about all to pray with me? If you talk about me, I'm going to praise God for you. If you cuss me out, I'm going to speak blessings on you. And if you need a ride to work, I'm coming and pick you up. Somebody ought to pray with me. I've been with God. I've partaken of the divine life. And why am I doing this? Because I'm just rehearsing for how I got to be in heaven. Somebody better give God some praise. I refuse to be upset. I refuse to be defeated. I refuse to hate you. I refuse. And if they ever get too rough for me, I'm just going to lift up my arms and let the wind get under me. And I'm going to let God take me to a dimension where I can't see, I can't hear, I can't do nothing but feel his presence. That's all you really need. You don't need to entertain foolishness. You need to get in the presence of God. I need some help in here right now. The next time one of your friends come to you, talking about what somebody said about you, say, honey, I am not like I used to be. I'm all about my father's business right now. You take that stuff there and go get you some prayer because there ain't nothing nobody can do with me because if God is with me, who in the world?
Tell somebody I need to fly away sometime before I get my wings. I need to fly away sometime. When things get heavy and things get hard, I need a God that can lift me up when I'm wore down with the weight of the world. I need a God that can make these wings move when they lock down in depression because you got a song in your heart that only you can sing. And when you can't get up, if you begin to praise God, he'll come down, get under you and... How many of y'all know God is all right? If you love him, give him a praise. When we go to heaven, God is going to take away every prayer, every problem. Y'all hear me? Things you and I can't even imagine. I'm going to throw this one at you, and I hope you can understand this. When you get to heaven, you won't even have to relieve yourself. I wish I had a praying church in here. See, I, I, I know you do. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. You're going to be in a glorified body. Somebody ought to pray with me with no blood in it. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all remember how Jesus went up? You're going to have the same type of body. If there's anyone who do not know the Lord Jesus and the pardon of your sins, in other words, real simply, if you do not have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to afford you that opportunity because Jesus wants to be your friend. Amen? Amen. If you're not saved, you can come up or you can wherever you at. All you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and he will come in and he will save you. Amen. If there's anyone who would like to be a church member here at Canaan, we're going to open up the doors of our church. If you would like to be a Member here at Canaan. Let's go. Go to that. You in the back. Okay. I'll get him. May you may be seated. Amen. Please rise. Please rise with us. <laughs>